card yet. Is there someone here tonight by show of hand not received a card when you come through the door? And raise them up high if you hadn't got a card. We'll get you a card. I know my children did get a card, and well, they'll get one later. Uh, Tammy's got some back there. Tammy's got some, and make sure Chase and some others here will get you one. Once you, as you receive those cards tonight, I want to make sure you got one. Open them up very carefully. Some of you already have done that. That's perfectly fine. Uh, a little poem in there and some scripture verses and so forth. Uh, I'll try to make these up for you tonight. Uh, this uh, may be the only card some of you might get at Valentine. I hope you get a card, some candy. Somebody tells you that they love you. You got to tell people that you love them, but you also got to show them. You got to show people. I want you to read in there, there's a poem. It's table for two. It's on the inside. And you don't have to read it out loud, but just take a little moment. It won't take you very long. And as you're all done reading that, I'm going to ask Sister Brenda Robertson, and she'll come and uh, sing a song looking through the eyes of love. Brenda. But anyway, God is love, isn't he? Thankful for his love. Go ahead. <clears throat>
ਦੱਸੋ ਯੈਸ ਪ੍ਰੇਜ਼ ਦਾ ਲੋਰ I got a, a letter for you and a, a message within this that I wrote. Uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1. By night on my bed I sought him, whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. I will rise now and go about the city in the streets, in the broad ways, and I will seek him, whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. The watchman that goeth about the city found me to whom I said saw ye him whom my soul loveth it was but a little that I passed from them but I found him whom my soul loveth I held him and would not let him go until I brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me the title today is simply the lover of my soul and that is the song of solomon chapter 3 verse 1 through 4 the writer of this book is attributed to solomon the second wisest man to walk on this earth the first being the son of god king solomon was known for his wisdom his words and his wealth the people enjoyed listening to him speak with over 3000 proverbs and 1005 songs Yet out of all those songs there's only one song that was recorded and that is the song of Solomon a song of love that he had for a young Shulamite girl he was a wealthy king who observed this poor peasant farm girl working in the fields below the king loved this woman not for her beauty without but for her beauty she had within the king had many concubines who loved him for what he had rather than for who he was he longed for true love for someone to love him for who he for who he was and not for what he had so he laid aside his royalty and he disguised himself with humility as a shepherd he came down from his throne to walk amidst his people he pursued this woman whom he had observed and longed to be with he would introduce himself as a shepherd looking for lost sheep you see he knew where she lived worked and her way of life gently but surely he would keep coming around and knocking at the door of her heart he courts her with romantic walks and talks and tells her just how beautiful that she is and being true to her he reveals his identity to her in the second chapter in verse 1 and tells her that he is more than a shepherd but rather the king he extends an invitation to come and dine with him in the banquet house she graciously accepts the invitation for a special dinner that had been prepared at the banquet house there over the table held up high as a banner of love in chapter 2 verse 4 he meets her and escorts her to the table like a gentleman he is He gives her a loving embrace and sits down with her to talk one on one. She is smitten by his affection and falls deeply in love. In second chapter verse 5 with him. While over dinner he asks for her hand in marriage to be the future queen. She accepts and is espoused to the king. He tells her that he must go but that he would come again and receive her as his bride. While he is gone working on their new home on high she in her absence continues working for him while being faithful unto him in the fields below in the third chapter verse 1 he is all she can think about talk about and long to be with she looks diligent for for him in the third chapter verse 2 she runs from fields into the city asking the people have you seen him i'm looking for him He's going to return and take me home. I just need to be with him and get in his presence and hear his words. She diligently she sought to find him, to find him, and she did. Finally, in verse 4, chapter 3, verse 4, she found him and would not let him go, for he is a lover of my soul. I hear so many 
trying to define love and what it means. While there are different forms and uses of the word in Scripture, there's only one that I know that describes all love, and that is God. In 1 John 4, verse 8, God is love. Love does not come from a book or a bottle below, but true love only comes as a gift from above. I see people today looking for love in all the wrong places, needing to experience true love within and find satisfaction. They need to be loved for who, who they are, not for what they have or can do. Many identify love with lust. Lust takes and love gives. Lust is of the flesh and love is of the spirit. Lust is an outward appearance in the world like power, money, sex, and even beauty. King Solomon wrote that in Proverbs 31.30, beauty is deceitful. Many things can look good without but be very bad within. There's nothing wrong with outward beauty, but the king emphasized that real beauty is within. Here is a woman who is lovesick, bitten by the contagious love bug. Some would say love is overrated, a second-hand emotion, or maybe just merely a choice. As I said earlier, it should not be defined to one thing, but rather these and more. When you receive Christ, you receive love. And when the Holy Spirit comes into your heart, it is like a contagious disease. It affects your entire being. Romans 5 verse 5 said, Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. For a virus to thrive and survive, it needs a host. When we let Jesus in our hearts, Revelation 3.20, then we become a host through the Holy Ghost. In doing so, it brings about a change in the way we see people. Our hearts are moved with compassion to show them love, not by force, but by choice. This woman is in love with the shepherd. It affects the way she thinks, acts, and feels. You ask me, what does love have to do with it? Everything. He wanted me to ask you, do you love me? Some say they do, but when he looks in the recesses of their soul, their hearts are far removed. He wants to be loved for who he is as well, not for what he can give or do. We should love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Her lover is one who loves her for not what she has or what she can do, but rather who she is. True love has intimacy. They're only into me, you see, as a person. He loves her soul. The soul is the real person within. The soul is made of the mind, the will, and the emotions. When a person tells someone they love them with all their heart, they're referring to their soul. The king desires to have a personal relationship with you and be your soulmate. There's only one true love that can satisfy the soul, and that is Jesus Christ. I have found him and would not let him go, for he is the lover of my soul. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Then come to the table he has for you. Come and dine at a table for two. No one else but Jesus and you. He asked you a question, do you love me? We do not need to ask him if he loves us. He has told us and he has showed us on the cross in John 15, 13. Greater love have no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. The greatest song indeed is the heart song of love. Amen. Well, that is exactly, I do not have a table up here tonight, but I hope you'll use your imagination a little bit. And if you could just see yourself sitting down with the master. One on one, a table for two. Sometimes in worship, you look around and you see we get to looking back and we look over the side and wonder what everybody else is doing. And you know most of the time I've ever seen when there's problems in the church or problems around, is because we've lost focus. And you need to be looking up to the Lord. And looking up when we, when we love Him, you're going to love, we're going to love each other right. And so many times when you come into worship service, we're looking around and seeing over here and worried about what they're doing. 
Or are they getting blessed? Or am I getting excited over here? You need to imagine yourself sitting down at a table for two. Just you and Jesus. And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, we're not on the clock. And we're not worried about what everybody else is. It's just you and the Lord. You're sitting down with the Master. You're getting in His presence. You feel His glory and watch Him bless you and help you and He'll feed you. You put your feet tonight. You put your feet up under the Lord's table. And I told you, you don't have to ask Him, do you love me? But He does ask us, do you love me? I hope we'll come and worship the Lord tonight. We'll worship Him tonight. These young men, I'm so pleased to have them in the service tonight with us. Uh, Grant and Zane and Satterfields. And I appreciate them, their family, being here tonight, the dad, mom, and so forth. We appreciate them, and I just pray the Lord will anoint you, young men. I want you to come, if you will, at this time. Make them feel welcome. And let's worship the Lord tonight. Amen. Just put your self up under that table and worship Him. It's good to be here this evening. I want to thank you all for having us out. Uh, we had a really good service last time we were here, and I don't expect anything different today. Um, but I know with Valentine's Day coming up, I just want to say everything that I'm thankful for. Um, I'm thankful for my family. I can't, I couldn't ask for a better family. They do it. They've been everything that I've ever needed, and I cannot thank them enough for everything they've done for me. Um, I'm thankful for God. He's put uh, things in my life that um, I couldn't ask for any better things. Uh, He's just been good to me, and uh, this song we're about to do, um, it talks about God's love for us, and um, he puts us, we go through trials in our lives, but he's able to make a way, and he can get us through those, so I know you all know this song, so you can sing right along with us.
sins were gone, my sins forgot. There is a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave Stand in my heart.
Praise the Lord. Wasn't that great tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Brenda, if you come this time, and Tammy, we want to have an invitational song. 
And uh, let's all stand, if you will. If anyone has a need here tonight, especially you need to know this Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. Uh, the Spirit of God's moving here tonight. Remember, it's the table for two. Uh, you, you need to come. You need to come to this banquet. He's already prepared for you. He's prepared this feast. And He wants to gloriously save your soul. You want to find true love tonight, you can find it here tonight. You can accept Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. He'll be the lover of your soul, I assure you. He'll never leave you and never forsake you. You Maybe you're here tonight and you're already saved. And uh, you feel like it, maybe those disciples and out there on the Sea of Galilee and all the darkness around you and there rose a great storm. And great was that storm, the Bible says. And it beat, the, the waves began to beat in the ship and the swells came. But then you know Jesus. Jesus was on board with them and He was asleep. And they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? They knew who to turn to though, didn't they? They woke up the Master. You have remember though, even those storms, sometimes you get your eyes upon the storm, you see how great that it is. You realize that you've got a God that's right there with you the whole time on board and just need to wake Him up. Greater is He and Jesus He rose, the Bible said. He was greater than the storm. And he said, peace be still. And He calmed that, calmed that sea, calmed that storm. And you may be a storm within your soul, but Jesus can say, peace be still. And He can calm the troubled soul and the waters in your soul. You're here tonight. We want you to come. Come right now with the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart. As they say,
Oh,